Welcome to Weekly Action Central Extra Edition with the head coach of San Diego State men's soccer, Ryan Hopkins. The Aztecs are 3-3-2 three, three, and two overall on the year. And on Saturday, you guys played at Snapdragon Stadium in front of a record-breaking crowd. Nearly 4,000 fans attended when you played UC Davis. Take us through what that game was like and all the community support that you were able to have. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, it's been something we've been trying to grow for the last three years. You know, it's our third year being able to to host a game in there. And, you know, every year the, the attendance has gone up, which is awesome to see. And I think it just sets up nicely. We have SDFC, you know, the brand new MLS team coming to town. So San Diego is a is a football community. Um, so it's exciting to see, you know, even at the, I still consider us the grassroots level, um, the kind of support that we have. And, you know, usually we try and get a local team. Like last year we had USD and we were both nationally ranked and, you know, we're like, Oh, might might be tough to, to top that, but, you know, um, and, you know, not taking anything from UC Davis, who's having a great season and they're a great team. Um, you know, we were a little bit worried about, you know, not having that also local support from the, from the opposition, but yeah, to, to, to break the record again, um, you know, just shows, I think the support that this city has for San Diego state and, and soccer in general. So awesome, uh, awesome atmosphere. You know, the players feel like pros for a day, um, for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, we couldn't be um, more grateful to our university for giving us the chance to, to play in there. And no better way to fire up that crowd than scoring 16 seconds into the match with Austin Bromet, who scored his fourth goal in the season, leads the team in goals. How does he continue to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net for this team? Yeah, he's got a great, great nose, great nose for goal. Um, and uh, he just always like, you know, is always in the right place at the right time. He always just find himself in what we call high, high XG areas or high expected goal areas. And, you know, that's where most of his goals, you know, have come from is, you know, getting center, <laughs> center of the goal relatively close as possible to the goal. And that's where you're going to score, you know, a lot of, a lot of your chances. So we're excited and, you know, he started off hot and then cooled down and, you know, we're hoping he can, you know, catch fire as we, as we head into whack play. So I think that was a big goal for him, you know, strikers like, you know, tend to have uh, ups and downs in their season. So it's trying to keep them confident and keep them in front of goal. And, you know, hopefully they uh, they score in buckets. And, you know, we're hoping he's catching fire at the right time as we head into the WAC play next week. You also pick up the WAC Offensive Player of the Week this week in Robbie Matei, who scored a goal and assist. He was a new addition to the program that you brought in this year. How impactful has he been to this roster so far? Yeah, he's great. I mean, he's he's such a versatile player. He can play inside, you know, as like a number 10. He can play obviously wide as a as a seven eleven and he's got pace and he's got power. He's got, you know, technical ability. He can cross, he can shoot. So it's just, yeah, I think um, you know, giving getting him like indoctrinated in our principles of play and the things that, you know, we want him to do on the offensive side and the defensive side, you know, are we require our attackers to do a lot of defending high up the field to create more scoring chances for us too. So it's something, you know, I think that takes a little bit of transition because not everybody does that. So I think it takes a little bit of transition time, but um, yeah, he's hit the ground running. Um, you know, he's had some big games for us and you know, he's a great guy work works his butt off. So yeah, we were really happy to see him um, get back on the score sheet as well. I think, you know, really when those front four guys, when it's Rami and Austin and Terrence and, and Robbie, I think they're, you know, we've won a lot of games when they're all like scoring and assisting. It's sometimes I laugh at them. I'm like, I don't know who to play. Like, you know, Terrence, you had a goal and assist, but I don't know. You might find your way onto the bench, you know, because Robbie and Rami and Austin also scored. So it's, it's also made it a little bit of a, <laughs> a headache for me come selections, but I think when we get to these Thursday, Sundays in league play, we're going to need everybody. So it's, a, I guess, a good problem to have. Yeah, having too many players too deep of a roster can never be a bad thing, <laughs> certainly. You have yeah. one more match this weekend, UC Irvine, before you take on WAC play beginning next week. As newcomers to the league, what are your expectations as you encounter conference play for the first time in a new league? Yeah, no, we've been really impressed. You know, we we've watched a lot of, you know, the WAC teams and it's been really fun to to follow everybody. And, you know, I think we've got five teams in the top hundred in the RPI, which is, you know, what you what you always like to see. And we're getting great results, you know, 
Kyle Baptist is tying North Carolina. We got a result against Maryland. Um, Grand Canyon's beating Duke. So it's fun to see us go against the big boys too. Seattle's getting, you know, their results. I think they tied OSU, played Denver really tight. Um, so it's fun to see us, you know, the auto, I don't think the WAC gets enough respect in my opinion. And I felt that even before I was in the WAC, you know, there's been multiple teams in the NCAA tournament, I think for the last, you know, five years, um, a lot of pros coming out of this league. So we, we knew it was a good challenge, um, coming here and, and hopefully we can continue to help, you know, raise the profile of the conference with, with what we do. You're also splitting time with two goalkeepers right now. Is that a position battle that you want to have one keeper, or one starter come conference play? Or are you plan to roll out with two for the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean, we're we're kind of open to whoever is is playing well. Uh, you know, that's probably not by design, you know, that we would, you know, obviously we would love to have probably one more you know, set, but, you know, I think the same thing kind of when we're talking about attacking players, you know, you have two good guys and, and they're battling and they're playing well and margins are tight. And um, I think like field players, you know, maybe there's one guy's a little bit better at dealing with crosses. One guy's a little bit quicker off his line. So based on our opponent too, can we make tactical changes to, you know, give us a one or 2% edge in the game? And I think, you know, looking at, I think all the league games are going to be really, really tight no matter who we're playing. So I think any of those one or two percent advantages that we can, you know, we can take, I, I'm all for. What do you like most about the high caliber players that you have this year in the locker room and setting the tone for the first season in the WAC? Yeah, you know, I mean, we we did we we wanted to get a lot of you know older players into the group this year. We've had it's been really interesting. Obviously, two years ago we had the number one recruiting class in the country. All those guys are like finally juniors now, um, so they're you know a little bit older. And then we felt like we had a really good two year window um, with those guys, their junior and senior year. Um, and then what last year kind of of COVID in the transfer portal. So we felt like this year was really important, you know, to bring in a lot of those older players. So we've kind of focused more on that on the transfers and they've been great because they've gone through ups and downs and we've had, you know, a really good start. We could have had a great, a great start, um, you know, with a couple draws that, you know, uh, a play here or a play there, you know, could be wins, um, you know, but we've been really happy. You know, you look at our strength. I think our strength, the schedule is like 29 in the country right now to, you know, where we're at. We're real happy with the caliber of competition uh, we're playing. And I think it's those older guys that have been through the ups and the downs and, and been in most of our team has never played in a conference tournament. We never had one. So I think like those guys like Andre Puente from, from LIU, who's been, you know, been to the NCAA tournament three times and had to win three conference tournaments to to get there you know he understands the you know no matter if you're the eighth place team as long as you get into the the championship you have a you know you have a chance to win the tournament so I think like having those guys experiences and understanding we probably don't need to be peaking uh right now um you know into you know it's most important when we're playing our best you know hopefully at the um you know beginning of November you can tell even just watching some of the goals that you guys have scored this year, it almost feels like the guys have so much chemistry, have been playing together for years, just in terms <laughs> of how you guys keep the shape work, those triangles inside the box that are really hard to weave and maneuver in between defenders and put it away. Is that just something that happened in the off season and just guys with a lot of veteran experience coming back and being able to kind of take over and control what happens on the field? Yeah, I think a bit, a bit of both, you know, we're, you know, we have a good amount of structure and how I want, you know, things to look and, and how things are, how things are done. And we hammer that home obviously in training. And so I think a lot of those sequences are straight off the training pitch, which is always exciting as a, you know, as a coach, um, you know, to see. So I think it's, and then we recruit, you know, based on, you know, characteristics of players that we think can fit these type of roles. Um, so I think when, you know, when we bring these guys in, it's, it's not like such a foreign concept, you know, to them, we look at, okay, what are you good at? How can we fit that into the things that we want you to do? And then, you know, just tweak it, um, you know, just a little bit. So, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a part of all of those things. I think it's recruiting. I think it's, um, you know, the principles of play we have and the structure we play, but we also have good players and like those guys are smart and, you know, they played enough soccer in their careers to know where spaces are in the field that they can exploit. And um, I think also when you're playing with really good players, that also makes it, you know, makes it a little bit easier too. So I think it's, you know, a combination of all those things. 
you're in your fifth year at the head coach of this program and San Diego state has earned national rankings to the last three years. What goes into developing a program and taking it as your own and creating, you know, a program that, that gets national recognition early on. Yeah, I would say a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, mostly tears, a uh, decent amount of sweat, but yeah, not many people know. I, you know, I was hired and then COVID started two weeks later. So the first, you know, and obviously being in California, our restrictions were, were quite, quite heavy. Um, so really the first year and a half of, of the position, I wasn't, you know, wasn't in the office, wasn't really around the team, you know, obviously as, as much as we could be with all the, you know, all the things that we needed to do in, in order to play. So it's been, um, yeah, it's been a really tough work in progress and, you know, everything that we try and build about is, is culture. So it's, also, I think that takes longer, um, you know, than, you know, we could have just tried to go out and get the best players and just bring them in. But ultimately, we wanted to bring the best people and the best players in. And I think that also takes a little bit longer um, to do. So I think it's been, yeah, it's been exciting to see that national recognition for, for you know, I would say somewhat of a, you know, a mid-major, if you will. Um, so I think it's exciting to to see that and, you know, being able to sustain it over, you know, four to five weeks in a season. I think we've been also regionally ranked every single season, um, you know, been able to bring in those national rankings and then obviously see the All-Americans and the professionals and the players of the year, um, you know, in the Pac-12. You know, I think all those things have been, um, you know, super exciting. But, yeah, it's been a lot of work. You know, I got a, I've had great, great support here from, you know, the administration, from, you know, like our academic support services, um, equipment, you know, all the, all the areas are, our athletic training staff. So it's, it's definitely not just me. It's, you know, it's, it's all these people coming together, you know, that care about our student athletes care about, um, their growth as human beings. And, you know, I think that's been a big part of all, all of our success. And even just looking at your career, you've made numerous stops as an assistant at Virginia, Denver, Wisconsin, Cal Poly, Concordia, how have you taken a bit of everything that you've learned over those stops and from other coaches and made it your own and brought it to San Diego State? Yeah, I, I've tried to learn, you know, one of our big core values is is growth mindset. And, you know, I've tried to carry that in any of our, you know, in any of my stops. And, and even now I'm still learning every day. I'm learning from the players. I'm learning from our staff. I'm learning from, you know, other coaches online, you know, or watching games, um, you know, having conversations, you know, all those things. So I think for me, it's just being a constant learner and, you know, having your, you know, your set principles, but having flexibility within those, you know, set principles for opportunities um, to grow. And I've been really blessed with the opportunities I've had in my life to not only work in those places, but live in those places, some of the most beautiful places on the planet. So, um, but yeah, I think all the coaches that I work with really took, um, you know, the opportunity to not only help me grow, but allow me to grow too within my roles. I think, you know, I, Virginia is probably the one that I, I think about the most that way of, you know, a place that has seven national championships, um, you know, and when I went in there and they just kind of opened me, you know, welcomed me with open arms and kind of let me take the reins in certain things. And I think that that gave me so much confidence as like kind of the final step that I could do this here at San Diego State. So um, I think I grew a lot, you know, as a coach it, there, I think Denver, I grew without a doubt the most as a person, um, you know, from the culture that they, you know, they have and Jamie being one of my close, close friends, um, you know, still root for them a lot. Um, and it's awesome to see the season that they're having. So, yeah, I think every place, um, you know, has a special, you know, little niche. Obviously, I played at Concordia, too. So there's, you know, special niche there. So, yeah, I think all of the places have um, a little bit and they're all a little different. And I think San Diego State has really helped me prepare for that. Like Virginia, we had <laughs> you didn't have to worry about anything. Your budget was amazing. And recruiting was like, you were picking rather than recruiting. Um, so I think like all the places, you know, where Denver is a little bit different in, in how you had to recruit there. And Cal Poly was a little bit different of how you really had to recruit California kids in mind. And I think that's more similar to what we have to do here. So I think every place of, yeah, had to do a little bit different of a job, but I think all those parts of the job, you know, have really allowed me to combine and kind of make my own, you know, my own thing here at San Diego State. And you made a lot of stops. You mentioned the beautiful spots, San Diego, not a bad spot also to end up. <laughs> very true. Very true. Expensive, but beautiful for sure. 
Very true. You know, you got to pay for the great weather, I guess. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> San Diego State is on the road. It's a 6 p.m. Pacific time kickoff against UC Irvine. You can watch that match on ESPN+. Plus. Thank you so much, Coach, for joining us this week. My pleasure. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, hopefully we'll catch up real soon. Absolutely. For Weekly Action Central, I'm Kendra Sheehan.